Hello, Captain Reed. This is Paul. Hey, how, Paul. My friend, how are you? Well, I'm doing fine. I'm surviving out here. I've been in some real stormy weather, and I'm in a storm now. But the sun is out, and uh, the boat is uh, uh, broken, a little smashed up and messed up, but I've got to sail up, and we're sailing, and, uh, and things still look good for us to keep going. All right. When you say broken up, what do you mean the boat is broken up a bit? Well, uh, 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 um, three days ago, I capsized completely over, upside down, right. and uh, in, in a giant rogue wave. So that banged me up pretty bad, and it messed things, a lot of things up in the boat, and uh, and completely destroyed one sail, and, and broke that boom, and jumbled up the boat, made a bit of a mess. Um, but luckily, we survived that okay. I think that was three days ago, and the storm hasn't let up yet. And I've torn a couple more sails and broken some ropes, and it's been a pretty tough time out here. But like I said, uh, um, I still have plenty of good food and plenty of fresh water and, and the ability to fix the things that broken, and uh, soon enough the, the, the storm will end, and I'll get up in a little better weather, and, and I'll be able to fix things, and I'll be able to continue the voyage. Reed, when when you have a storm like that, do you 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 do put up the sails, or is it you don't you uh, put, put them down? Oh, well, I put the sails way down. I, and in fact, when I'm in a big storm, I have uh, um, um, two sizes, three sizes of storm sails that I use, which are very small sails and very tough and very thick, and they on the very first the boat, because then that blows the front of the boat down away from the storm, away from the waves, so that I'm kind of going uh, uh, with with the storm and with the waves, and so I have very, very small, tough sails that I have up in the front to, to do that. All right. Where, where are you right now? I'm uh, about um, uh, 500 miles north of the Falkland Islands. In the South Pacific, in the South Atlantic, I'm still in, uh, the, in that famous area that's called the Roaring Forties because they do have a lot of uh, storms down here, uh, big storms year round. Okay, so uh, you'll uh, wait for this to pass, or you? How do you deal with it now? Well, um, uh, like I said, I I rounded uh, Cape Horn. Um, Ten days, two weeks ago. So uh, that was the what could be expected the worst because I was way down south. I was in iceberg territory. It was very cold, and there were some big storms. And so that's that's usually known as the roughest, worst area. And I've made it north of there, but I'm still in the the uh, the, the stormy area. And just, in fact, it surprised me that the first storm. Uh, recently, instead of down around Cape, and uh, uh, it's wind, wind, wind sounds like uh, near a uh, engines, and uh, um, the waves are breaking all the time, out of control. Uh, so the waves are hitting the boat, and I've got my little storm sail up front. And it disbalances the boat, and it pushes her downwind, because pretty soon I get tired, I have to lay down and go to sleep, and then the boat keeps going, and she usually stays on the course that I set her on, which is often the only course that I can possibly go on. How much sleep can you get, Reed? like that, and... Reed? Hello? Reed? How much... Hello, Reed? Okay, I think we got disconnected there. Um, let's keep this uh, going here. Um, and uh, hopefully Reed will call back. I'm going to turn this off here. Yeah, hi, Paul. I, uh, when I talk, I can't see my phone. I didn't know when I was cut off. Oh, you... Uh, wh oh, where, where was I when I got cut off? I was just asking you about you saying you have to lie down and go to sleep and, uh, uh, and, uh, uh and let the boat do what it's got to do. And I was asking you, how much sleep are you able to get? Or how do you how do you sleep? <laughs> uh, the Twenty minutes here, hour here. What do you, what do you do? 
Well, uh, um, I think an hour is more like it. I, I sleep about an hour at a time, and then I get up, and then I look around. I look at the compass course. I I, I look at the, uh, the the little sail that's up and make sure it's okay, and hope that I don't find it all torn or broken or 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 something like that. And I check things out, and then I go right back to sleep. And and um, so then I climb back into bed, and the bed has these kind of lee cloths, these canvases. And when I lay down in that, uh, I'm secure, even if the boat um, uh, uh, gets knocked down or, or turned over. I'm I'm like laying almost in this hammock. It has sides that come up on both sides of me, and I'm all squeezed in there so that I lay still when the boat gets rolled back and forth and and then I'm tired so I yeah. go right back to sleep and then and then a, uh, a very short while later something wakes me up a roll or a noise or something like that I wake up again I get up go and I look I look all around I look at the compass course and, and look at our speed and, and check things out I see it's okay I climb back into bed so I've been getting enough rest uh, um, like I said, I have a strategy that includes things like that. I have to get enough rest. And no matter what, I have to make sure that I feed myself well because I, I um, don't want to um, lose my strength or get too tired doing the things I have to do. When, is that what the first capsized? Uh, uh, I, I, I can't recollect. Is that the first time you capsized since you've been out? Uh, yes, it is. Um, I got... Uh, a couple of knockdowns. I got one knockdown in the Pacific. Um, that's more like uh, um, going along and having a, a wave turn you over and knock you down um, with maybe the mast close to the water, but not all, not in the water. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a pretty uh, um, dramatic experience anyway because the wave breaks right over the boat, mm -hmm. knocks you down, and everything has to be well secured in the boat. Um, or it gets tossed everywhere. So I've always been trying to make sure things are secure, but you can't make everything secure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, so I had a, I, I had a couple of knockdowns before I had my capsize. Now, when I capsized, I was standing in the galley cooking, and the wave hit, and it slammed me back against the wall, and I don't know what happened. I, I, it wasn't a blackout, more like a whiteout. Mm -hmm. But water poured all over me, cold water from the ocean, and that woke me up, and the boat came up again, and she kept going. So I was completely drenched with water, and I was a bit hurt, uh, knocked up. I wasn't cut or broken, but but you could say that, you know, it was almost like having some big football guys jump on me and pound me to the ground. I was all shaken up and sore and, 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 and hurting. But I knew that I had to check things, so... So I immediately went and I looked in the bilge to make sure I wasn't filling up with water. Mm -hmm. And I and I looked uh, at the uh, um, my uh, electric monitoring panel to make sure that that was still going because I didn't know water poured in when the boat went under through the slide in the hatch. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's like when it went under, so much water came in, I I couldn't believe it. But it was it wasn't really enough water to affect the boat because I went to the bilge pump after that and started pumping, and I pumped, 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 and that was it. There wasn't hardly any water. Mm -hmm. I looked outside, and the storm sail that I had up was, uh, like, nothing left of it. It was blown into ribbons like you might have seen in paintings or, or a movie or something, and you can't imagine that really happens. But the sail went underwater. The boom broke. The sail was blown into ribbons. And there wasn't anything left of the sail. It was just ribbons blowing in in the air. Mm -hmm. But I had a smaller storm sail. So I knew I had to set the smaller storm sail because without a sail up, the boat lays broadside to the waves and gets hit more times by the waves. Uh -huh. If you're going okay. at an angle down a bit and you have a little bit of speed, then you don't get hit as hard by the waves and they push you along better. So I knew I had to get the storm sail up and I managed to do that and... And, and everything was a mess in the boat, and I was completely soggy, wet all day, and, and cold, and 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 that was three days ago, and I haven't even hardly begun to clean up after that that mess, you know. Uh -huh. So the, things are a bit of a mess on the boat, but you see, my food is wrapped like triple four times in plastic, mm -hmm. so my food is okay, my clothes are okay, uh, my electronics were all wrapped up, triple wrapped in plastic in a locker. So when water came squirting in, uh, they didn't get wet. So now I've got things normal almost, but 
uh, but I'm still in a storm, and I don't have up any but a, but a small. I look around and and see if everything's okay, and it's tiring to go outside, stand in that wind, and and hold on while the boat. How's your water supply? For breaking the boat, and you get all wet and cold. So I'm in the pilot house right now. How's your water I'm, supply, I'm in, Reed? Uh, my water supply is uh, is just fine. It's doing real well. Good, good. Reed, remind um, remind the audience about the boat. I mean, Anne is a heavy boat, right? You put a lot of heavy weight. A Anne is how long? Tell us about the boat for a second or two. Over, my, over 30 years. So she's an old, funky boat now. She's not a modern, expensive racing boat. 30 years. And you have a heavy weight on the bottom, right? But I recollect you say the hull is heavy. He played like cement. Oh, yeah. All right, we got this connected here in the bottom of that boat to keep it from tipping over. Okay, Reed. Yeah, hi, hi Paul. Okay, got this connected again there. Yeah. So I Where was. was I? I, you were I don't talking. Know. I had asked you a question about the boat. Uh, I mean, uh, Anne. And uh, what did you put in the bottom of Anne? Uh, lead or some? Uh, yeah, the the boat is made of uh, of uh, steel and fiberglass putty, almost like a ferro cement boat. Right. And the keel goes down uh, almost 10 feet. And we put in uh, 42,000 pounds of junkyard lead and steel and cast it into place with, con with concrete. On top of that, we built the water tanks. So uh, when the boat goes over, there's so much weight down deep in one spot that she just literally has to come right back up. And she does. She comes right back up without stalling or waiting or anything. And the masts are, are made of fir trees, and they're thick and solid, and the rigging's thick and solid, and, and all my ropes were lashed down on deck. N nothing happened on deck, basically. Nothing happened in the motor room. In the cargo hold, the cargo got jostled a little bit, um, but... Um, and in the other places, yeah, the cargo, all of my all of my gear got jostled around a little bit, little bit. But most of it stayed in in, uh, in in a good good shape. You're an environmentalist, Reed. You, well, you, right now uh, the the sun is shining into into my solar panels and giving me electricity to charge the battery to talk on the phone. How many solar panels do you have? I've got um, uh, about. Uh, um, eight of them around the boat. And you used... I, I broke one early in the voyage, and two of them got knocked, knocked out of place in the uh, capsize, but they didn't break, and the wires didn't break, and I secured them back into place. Okay. And uh, how are you feeling overall, personally, mentally? Uh, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling um, really happy that I've been able to sail for, like I said, I don't know, know exactly how many days it is right now, something like 664 days, longer than any boat or man has sailed before at sea without stopping or receiving supplies. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, really happy about that. And uh, like I said, um, things look good to go on. All the systems are working. I'm happy and, and healthy and um and there, there's nothing to um, to uh, stop me from going on and completing the thousand days as I planned. So uh, 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 mentally, you're uh, you're in good shape. You're you're psyched. You're uh, you're you're doing what has been a long life passion to be able to do. What twenty years yeah, or so? I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm in I'm in good shape. I, well, today I'm in a storm that's been going on for quite a few days. I'm uh, a, a, a little bit worn out and a little bit tired and a little bit um, uh, apprehensive since the last uh, capsize and about uh, um, and I've had three sails torn out. That um, looks to me like a lot of work. I've got months and months of nonstop work to get the boat back into shape, which I would rather have a little more time to uh, to. Um, I'm an artist, you know. I'd rather have a little more time to make some paintings write some poetry and to meditate and that sort of thing but I'm going to have to just keep working but um, uh, being out here at sea has um, made me dig deep within myself to find my inner strength 
and to find that core of love that we have all inside of us. And being out here has brought that out. So it has, um, uh, it's been a gift to me, and it's a wonderful thing. And so I'm real happy to be out here, and I want to uh, explore that more um, during the months and months that are coming up that I'll be out here. The work, you mean you're going to have to sew those sails? Yeah, yeah, I've got months of work sewing sails ahead of me and, um, and, and fixing the boom that broke and other things. I have to sew the boots because if I fix them, if the other ones that I have break, then I'll have nothing. So I keep fixing my sails. And when I fix one, I put one up and it, and it goes for half a year and then, and then it goes up. Then I bring it down, I put the other one up, take maybe a month to these big heavy duty sails with a big needle that, and, it, and I have only a little space to, to set the sail up. I have to make sure that the sail is going to be flat and, and that the patches are all properly laid on so that when the wind gets in the sail there isn't one spot that will cause it to tear and all. So it's real difficult and, and hard work and there's a lot of other things that have to be done also. They're what, about 50 feet tall? How tall is the sail? Me? How tall are the sails? About 50 feet? How tall is one? Uh, are 60 feet. 60 feet tall. It's a lot of work, Reed. You're the the, the king of the uh, of, of the sailing and uh, true spirited. Um, I don't know if you can hear this. Are oh, you breaking up again? Um, Reed. Uh, I can't hear you, Reed. I can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me? I don't know. Maybe you can hear me. I can't hear you. So.